The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi everyone, my name is Helen Dion. I am Marketing Manager for SWK Technologies. I'd like to welcome you to our webinar, Year End Processing and Closing Procedures in Stage 100, presented by Christine from our Stage 100 Help Desk. A little housekeeping before we get started. Everyone has been placed on mute to keep the background noise down. However, you can submit any questions you have throughout the webinar. To submit a question, look for the question section in your GoToWebinar pod. We will answer all questions at the end of the presentation. We are also recording the presentation and we will be distributing it to everyone who attended and also those who registered but were not able to make it today. Um, lastly, please take a moment at the end of the presentation to answer our short two question survey. So with that said, we appreciate you taking time out of your busy day to attend our webinar. We are here to help you get the most out of your software solutions, specifically your Stage 100 solution, and help you find an easier way to run your business by providing you um, tools such as these webinars and other support whenever you need it. Um, lastly, as a quick reminder, SWK is constantly sharing important updates and software tips and tricks on our social media channels. So we encourage you to follow us on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. So without further ado, I am going to hand it over to Chris. Thanks, Helen. I'm going to... All right, looks good. Yeah. We can see your slide. Okay. Um, welcome, everybody. Our webinar yesterday focused on 1099 and W2E filing and payroll year-end. If you didn't register for that webinar and like a copy of the recording, please let us know. Today we're going to review year-end procedures for the rest of the modules. Year-end processing will happen automatically when you perform period-end processing for the module when it's in the last period of the fiscal year. We recommend a full backup of your entire Sage 100 system prior to starting year-end processing. And you can also do a backup copy of your company within Sage using the company maintenance copy function in Library Master. And this is for historical purposes. When you're doing year-end processing, there is some data that will be purged based on the number of years you're going to retain your history. And if you want to see this for um, any reporting or you need to look up something from prior, you can go into the copy company. You need to make sure that all entries are posted before performing year-end processing. If you try to do the processing and there is data entry, you'll receive a message and you will not be able to go forward until you have finished updating. You want to review the options for each module prior to performing your year end. And in each of the modules, there are specific questions. Um, some of them ask for number of days to retain history. Um, some of them ask for number of years to retain history. And we want to make sure that, that these are set to the correct number. If you have it set to zero and you do your processing, it will clear everything out. Um, so once you close it, you can't change it, which is why we recommend you have a backup. You also want to run all the applicable reports for the modules. You can also set these reports to print um, using the period end year end processing or the period end report selection. I prefer to run the reports prior to doing the processing so I can do my reconciliation, but again, it's a personal choice. Sage recommends that you close the modules in this specific order. Now, some of these modules don't actually have period end processing, but you want to make sure that all of your information is updated so that everything flows through properly to the other modules. So they recommend bill of materials first, work order second, barcode, purchase order, sales order, inventory, MRP, time card, payroll, receivables, payables, job cost, bank reconciliation, and finally, General Ledger is the last module that you will close. General Ledger is the only module 
once it's closed that should be reopened. And it was designed that way so that if you close it and then your accountant comes in and you need to make some year-end entries, you can reopen it, put the entries in, rerun your financial reports, and then reclose it. If you don't own any of these modules, you can just skip to the next module when you're doing your period end processing. Closing in this order, um, make sure that the modules write correctly to the other applications. Um, an example of this is sales order updates to inventory, receivables, and general ledger. So all the journals and registers for sales order should be updated and processing completed before the other modules are closed. Some applications transfer information in addition to receiving information from another application. An example of this is job cost. Um, job cost can post invoices to receivables. Receivables can post invoices to job cost. So all journals and registers for both of these should be updated before you run your year-end processing for either one. Some don't have a period end or year end, or they only have a year end. Uh, MRP, Material Requirements Planning, is one of those. It doesn't do period end processing, just a year end process to align itself with inventory. We're gonna start with purchase order module, the first on our list. So prior to doing your year-end processing, you wanna make sure you change your module date to the last date of the fiscal calendar year. You wanna verify that all your receipts, invoices, returns, and issues are posted. You wanna print the open purchase order report, which is a perpetual report, meaning it is just for that specific day. If you go back and try to run an open PO report three days from now, it's going to be different based on your receipts and invoice. You also wanna print the purchases clearing report and verify that it agrees to the general ledger. The purchases clearing report is the one that is generated and posted to when you do your receipt of goods if you don't invoice at the same time. So, Instead of it going to accounts payable, if there's no invoice associated with it, it posts to this purchases clearing account. When the invoice is attached to it through PO receipt of invoice entry, it clears it out of purchases clearing and posts it to accounts payable. But we wanna make sure that this is balanced to the general ledger and by running this report and comparing it to the purchases clearing general ledger account, we can verify that these numbers are correct. We also want to review the purchase order option settings to make sure that we are going to be saving history for the correct number of years for our company. And we'll take a look at all of these. So the purchase order reconciliation uh, provides the report to reconcile the purchases clearing account with what is left on the open purchase order. It includes the quantity ordered, the quantity received, and the quantity invoiced. If these quantities don't match, the purchase order remains in a back order status until they reconcile. Now, if you allow over receipt of purchase orders, your quantity received can be greater than your quantity ordered, but your quantity received has to match your quantity invoiced for your purchase order to be closed and the purchases clearing amount to be zeroed out. Um, the purchases clearing is set up in the product line in inventory product line maintenance, and it's a liability holding account. It does reflect the inventory received through receipt of goods until the invoice is posted. And then when the, um, when the amount is recorded in receipt of invoice entry, the purchase order is debited and the corresponding payable liability is credited. If you enter receipts in inventory management transaction entry and you change the order quantity or unit cost after you do your receipt of goods or receipt of invoice, the total purchases clearing account in the purchases clearing will not agree with the purchases clearing account balance. And that's because the purchases clearing account is only a reflection of what is received in through purchase order, not through inventory. And because this is a perpetual report, 
This needs to be run prior to posting any transactions for future periods. Once you've posted transactions for future periods, you cannot go back and run this as of the end of the month. It will not be accurate. This is an example of the purchases clearing reconciliation. This is done in open PO format. You can also do it by item number. It shows us our purchase order and who it was for, and then all of the lines, and then the quantity ordered, the quantity received, and the quantity invoiced, if there was any back ordered quantity, and then the cost and what was left. Because these items have been ordered, received, and invoiced, there's no dollar amount on the purchase order in the purchases clearing account. For this purchase order, however, our ordered amount is different from our received amount and our invoiced amount. We've only partially received it, so we have a balance still remaining. At the end of the report, there is a total, and that's the amount that should agree to your general ledger. Going to the setup options that we want to check before we go and do our purchases period and processing. We want to check that the days to retain completed purchase orders is set to a number that you are comfortable with. Mine is set to 90 days, which means when I do my year end processing, anything that has been um, completed prior to those 90 days will be purged from my open purchase order report. I can make this up to 999 days if I want to, so you can save almost three years of purchase order. You still have your purchase receipt history to go back to, but you will not see it on your open purchase order report. We also want to check to make sure that our current calendar year and our current period is set to the last period of the uh, fiscal year when we do our year-end processing. On the history tab, we want to go in and we want to make sure that years to retain purchase history for items and vendors is set to um, something other than two years. If we have it set to two years, what happens is when you do your year end processing, it will keep last year and this year. That counts as two years. So uh, I recommend that you keep it longer than two years. It's, it's up to you how long you want to keep it. The more information you have in there, the longer reports take to process, um, but you want to keep it long enough that you have the history that you need when um, you need to do reporting. You also have the option of printing all these other reports, and you can default them to print. When you do your period end processing, you can go in here and set them. So it might not be the standard report, it might be a different one that you have in there. The only problem with doing it through here is you can't do any kind of selections like you can normally do when you print a purchase order report to say, I want it to be a specific date, I only want it to be this specific range, I only want this vendor. So you're, you basically are tied to what the default settings are in the report. I recommend you print them ahead of time but you have this option to do this. Then you would come down to your period end, go to period end processing, and you would be in your 12th period. So mine is set for 12-31-2019, and you'll get this screen that says, purchase order period end and year end processing will be performed. It knows that it's going to do year end processing because it's the 12th period. Normally when you do your period end processing, it will only say period end will be performed. If I want to print the reports and I have them defined, I can check this box and then I hit proceed. If I tell it I want it to print the reports, the reports will all print. And then another box will pop up to tell me period 12, ending 1231 will be changed to period one. And it will tell me period end reports have not been printed and ask me if I want to complete year-end processing. I say yes, it goes through a quick little cycle and it's completed. And if you go back into your purchase order options, it will reset your current fiscal year to 2020 and your period to one. What happens when you close the purchase order module? 
Any expired master and repeating orders are automatically purged as of the year ending date. So each of these uh, master and repeating orders have expiration dates on them. It, it looks and checks to see if they fall within the range and purges anything that is outside the range. Completed purchase orders are automatically purged based on the number of days you have set in your options. So my 90 days, would anything would be automatically purged that fell outside that range. The purchase order recap is automatically purged if I tell it to in purchase order options. So it will clear it out and just do next month. I can keep it open if I want to see purchase order recap for the whole year. Receipt history gets purged as well based on my selection and purchase order options. I've selected to keep it for seven years. So anything prior to that gets purged from the system. And any purchase history and miscellaneous charge year-to-date balances are set to zero as of the year ending date. Moving on to sales order. Prior to performing the year-end processing, we're going to change the module date to the last day. We're going to verify that all invoices and shipments are posted. And we want to ensure that the sales recap reports are in sync with the sales history for both the customer and inventory master files. And so we want to make sure that we perform accounts receivable and inventory period end processing in conjunction with sales order year end processing. Accounts receivable and inventory year-end should be completed prior to updating sales for the next period. We also want to print the open sales order report. Again, this is a perpetual report, so it's only current as of the day that you print it. And we want to review the sales order setup options. In our main tab of sales order setup, we want to verify that we've got the correct current calendar year and current period set to 12. In our history tab, we want to make sure that we are retaining the sales history for the correct number of years. By default, on uh, whenever there's a new change to this, it will default to two. I do not recommend you keep that default. And then you have your selection of other reports that you can print. Um, there's back order reports, there's history reports, sales recap, uh, customer sales history, customer sales by item. Some of these are not perpetual reports and can be run at any time, but you want to go through and take a look at your reports, print them out to preview, see if it's something that you need. If not, you don't need to use. Then we go to our period on processing, telling us that it's going to close it as of 1231, asking if we want to print the reports. If we hit proceed, it will change it from period 12 to period 1, warn us that we haven't printed the reports, and ask us to complete year-end processing. We say yes, and it does our year-end processing. Once it's closed, the sales order module, the sales order recap files are purged based on your selection and options. Any expired master and repeating orders are purged as of the period ending date. And sales history is purged based on the number of years to retain sales history. And again, remember, once you close, you cannot go back. It's automatically purged. That's why having a history company is valuable. Moving on to inventory. Before we do our period end year end processing, we're going to change the module date, verify that sales, receipts, transfers, issues, and adjustments are posted. If you have LIFO, FIFO, lot, or serial items, you want to print the inventory negative tier report to check for negative tiers. If negative tiers exist, they must be corrected. And you would get a negative tier if you have shipped an item without there being corresponding inventory available, it will create a negative tier line. And then when you receive it in, you would have a receipt line. So you might have minus five and 10 came in after the fact. The negative tier report matches the minus five against the 10 and wipes out that negative tier line. So when you're running your valuation reports and your month end reports, you don't wanna see negative tiers on here. 
Uh, you also want to print the following year on reports, the inventory sales analysis, sales history, and inventory receipts history reports. Print the valuation report before you make any postings to future periods, as this, again, is the perpetual report, and the inventory trial balance report. These two should match. Your inventory valuation is your current valuation as of the end of the month, and your trial balance is the postings that you have made based on your transaction date. Those two should match. If they don't, you need to go back and reconcile them prior to doing your year-end closing. Then we'll go and review the inventory setup options. So we're going to go to the main tab, and we're going to look and make sure that we've got the current fiscal period set to 12. And we were talking about the negative tiers, and you can, um, you can issue and sell even if there's no quality, quantity available, which resolves in a negative cost tiers. And by going into period end inventory negative tier adjustment, you would click print, and it prints all of the items that have negative cost tiers. After printing that, you say yes to update. And what it will do, it will match the negatives to the positives that you have. And you print and update the daily transaction register. If there's any difference in the cost from what you sold it for, the cost of, the, of what you sold it for, as opposed to the cost of the new receipt, it will make a corresponding adjustment so that your inventory will agree to your general ledger. If you find when you run your negative tier report that you have negative quantities on hand and there is no corresponding receipt to match it, you want to go back and check and see why these are negative and adjust them prior to doing your closing. And then these are the reports. You should print your stock status report if you want to see what you have on hand. This isn't a valuation report. It doesn't show you what the value of the inventory is. It just shows you the quantities, what's on hand, what's on sales order, what's on purchase order, um, and the quantity available. The valuation report you want to print. The turnover report does it for the last 12 months. And then you have some sales analysis reports. The inventory detail transaction report can be printed at any time for any period or any range of dates. Then we move on to period end processing. As of 1231, check the box if we want to print the reports, and then it will change it. We say yes, and our inventory is closed. Prior to performing you're in processing for accounts receivable. We want to make sure our module date is correct. We want to ensure all our invoices and cash receipts are recorded. We want to perform our finance charge calculations if we use finance charges. We want to make sure that the customer statements are printed. And we want to, if we are using sales tax reporting within SAGE, we want to make sure that the sales tax report is generated. And the most important one is we want to make sure that the aged invoice report and the accounts receivable trial balance reconcile and that they agree to the general ledger. The aged invoice report is based on invoice date. The trial balance report is based on posting date. If these two don't match, that means that you have entered an invoice, say you entered an invoice in as a, with an invoice date of December, but maybe you have a, uh, a posting date of January. So when you look at your general ledger, it's not going to show on your December general ledger, and it's not going to show in your trial balance report, but it will show on your aged invoice report because it's a December invoice. You would have to adjust that, the posting date, to make sure that these all agree. Once that's agreed, then um, you can go and review your setup options prior to doing your period and processing. We want to look at the main tab for the current year and the current period. We want to look at the additional tab to see the number of days we're going to retain paid invoices and receivables. And this is important because when you do your closing, 
and you say, I only want to keep it for 99 days, anything that was paid prior to those to 99 days from back from December 31st will be purged from your customer master file. You will not see it if you go in and take a look in your open invoices. They will no longer be there. Now, they will still be in invoice history and in cash receipts history, but if you go to look in customer maintenance for them, they will be purged out of the system. So it's important to make sure that you set the number of days to save them for as long as you want to keep them. You don't want to keep them forever, which is why it's important that you um, do your, your year year end and period end processing on a timely basis so that you don't have years and years and years of invoices still in there. But you want to make sure that you don't just keep it at zero because then you won't have any, um, any detail left in your customer maintenance. And again, once you purge, once you do your processing, you cannot go back without restoring. In our history options, we want to make sure that we check the number of days that we're going, or the number of years that we're going to retain cash receipts history, the number of years we're going to retain sales history, customer history, and salesperson history. And these are some other reports that you can print either prior or during your period on processing. We do our period and processing. If we want to print our reports, we hit proceed. We go to the next screen. It'll tell us that we haven't printed. Ask us if we want to print. We say yes, and it completes it. After the, the module has been closed, any temporary customers with zero balances are purged, unless you selected to re retain them in the accounts receivable options. Your monthly sales cash receipts and salesperson history is retained based on the number of years that you have set in the options. And any open invoices with zero balance are removed based on the number of days to retain paid invoices. For accounts payable, prior to performing year-end processing, we're going to change our date. Verify that all invoices and checks are updated for the current month. And if we're closing for the month of December, we want to process the 1099 forms if applicable. And we also, like in accounts receivable, we want to print the accounts payable age invoice report and the accounts payable trial balance report. Make sure that they agree with each other and that they agree to the general ledger. If they don't, this needs to be reconciled prior to doing your year-end processing. You also want to print the check history report and review it, and review the accounts payable setup options. In our main tab, we're going to check our periods. On the additional tab, we're going to check the number of days we're going to retain paid invoices. And just like accounts receivable, however many days we have set here, any completed invoices will be purged from the system, so you will not see them in the vendor maintenance open invoice screen. You will still see them in check history, in, um, in vendor history, but they will not be available on that screen. Over on the history tab, we want to make sure that the years to retain vendor inquiry hist or vendor history is set to the appropriate number of years for us. And we also, if we are using ACH, how long do we want to retain electronic payment history? And then we want to make sure that we have it, the folder set correctly. The period and report selection gives us a list. And again, we can change the report settings if we have specific reports that we have. But we should really do these before we do the period on processing. There's monthly purchase reports, there's vendor analysis, there's check history. And we go through the same process we performed, and then it will change it to period one. And after we close the accounts payable module, 
Any temporary vendors with zero balances are purged unless you select to retain them in vendor maintenance. Vendor electronic payment history is removed based on the number of years that we've selected in the options. Vendor purchase history is removed based on our settings. Open invoices with zero balances are removed based on the number of days to retain paid invoices. If retained paid invoices, all current information is updated to the prior year fields and any invoice history with no current activity is removed based on options selected in the setup. General ledger, we want to make sure that we change our date and verify that all processing and modules integrated with general ledger has been completed. So prior to doing your general ledger, and most companies do not do this right at the end of the year because they have a lot of closing entries they want to make sure that everything for that year has been posted the general ledger is is okay with being left open things will post corresponding to the next year correctly um, and like i said prior if you do close it and you find that you need to make more entries into the general ledger you can reopen it by going back into setup to the options changing your year and your period back to 12 and the prior year, making your entries, running your reports, and then closing it again. You also want to print and update the recurring journal. If you use allocations, you want to select those and post all of those. You also want to do any closing entries using your general journal entry and you want to print and update your daily transaction register. And you also want to print and review the general ledger worksheet and the general, general ledger analysis report. The trial balance and financial statements should be printed for the period and you should verify that the trial balance and balance sheet are in balance. You also want to print the general ledger detail report you can do it for all periods in summary or detail. You don't physically have to print it. You can preview it and save it so that you have a copy of it. And then we review our general ledger options. Here we're going to go to our main tab, verify we've got the correct fiscal period and the number of years to retain transaction history. This is extremely important that this is not set to two. This is what your financial statements are based off. If you have the set to two, you will only be able to print last year's financial information if you close the year. So before you do your any of your year end, make sure that these numbers are checked and verified. This is how long you want to save them. Anything, any other data will be purged. So if we go to the options entry tab, at year end, you can reset your journal numbers or you can leave them to just continue um, to go. Same way with your register numbers. If you want to track deleted journals, you can, you can have that set. Over under budget, if you want to copy the actual to the default budget at year end, it will do it automatically if you have this box checked and it will create a new default budget for the next fiscal year. You can then go in and make revisions in the budget revision entry and update the budget revision register if there's something that has changed. But it's a fast, easy way to create a new budget without having to go through the whole thing. Then we have some more period end reports, the trial balance, we've already talked about the financial reports, there's the general ledger analysis and the general ledger detail. And then we do our period end processing. And then if you have not done your allocations, you will get a warning message that they haven't been posted for the period. If you don't have any, you can just say that you want to proceed. If you have some and haven't done them, you want to go back and do that before you go forward. Once you've got that done, then it will tell you that it's been changed. And if you haven't printed your reports, you say yes. It closes your current accounting period, and the accounting period is cycled forward to the next open period. If the next fiscal year has not been created manually when you close 
your general ledger, it will automatically create your next fiscal year and fiscal year maintenance. You can do that ahead of time um, by going in and just adding the new fiscal year in there at any point in time. But if it's not in there, th this closing will do that for you. The years to retain your general ledger history determines how many years of general ledger transaction history is retained. Once you've closed the general ledger module, accounts with a deleted status can be removed based on activity and the selection to retain history. And if the copy actual to default budget is checked, the actual amounts for the closed fiscal year are copied to the default budget for next year. Options for resetting the journal numbers are performed. If you say never to reset, it won't do anything. If you say to reset, it'll send them both back to, to one. If the clear balances checkbox in main account maintenance is selected for a main account, balances are cleared for non-financial accounts at the end of the year. If you're retaining transaction history, all of the current year information is updated and any transaction history with no current year is removed based on options in your general ledger options setup. So it's really important that you check all of your options in every module before you do your closing. Once you're comfortable that you have those all set up correctly, you don't have to keep going back every single month and doing it, but at year end, it's especially important because you're going to lose history on it. I seem to have lost my job cost, here we go. All right, so closing the job cost module, we're just gonna go through these um, quickly. The job cost module works exactly the same way as the other ones. Um, in the processes, we're changing the module date, we're verifying that all change orders, job billing invoices, and direct cost billing and cash receipts transactions are recorded. We verified that all modules that integrate with job costs, like accounts payable and payroll, have posted all their transactions. And if the monthly calculation of overhead is selected, you want to print the monthly overhead allocation report and update that. And also print and update the daily transaction register. There we go. You cannot perform period end processing if there's any job billing in progress. So if you have anything in your job billing register that hasn't been updated, it will not let you do it. If you have anything in your daily overhead allocation register or your monthly overhead allocation register that hasn't been updated, or if the daily transaction register has not been updated for any outstanding job transactions. Once you close the period, the following occurs. The year-to-date actual cost, invoice, billed, and payment received totals are cleared and set to zero, along with the year-to-date dollar and unit totals. Job information is removed if the retained job cost history checkbox is cleared. Closed jobs are archived instead of purged if the retained job cost history checkbox is selected. And if the retained transaction detail checkbox is cleared, transaction jobs are summarized. If selected, transaction jobs are retained until the job is closed. Work order doesn't have a period end or year end processing, but you want, before you do your inventory period end, year end processing, you want to make sure that the following steps are completed. You want to purge all work orders closed during the period. You want to print the work order history report using the closed date range. And you want to print the general ledger posting recap. If the general ledger isn't integrated with work order, you want to perform the, the purge at the end of the report. For the MRP module, there is no monthly period end processing, there's only a year end processing, which allows it to roll the inventory into the next year and increments the projected demands by one year. So you would just go into period end processing, select year end processing, print your projected demands report, and say yes to complete your year end processing. So that pretty much sums up what needs to be done for year-end processing. There's um, 
there are a lot of reports to look at. You want to make sure that you have all your reconciliations done, that your options are set. And if you have any um, further questions, there is a good website that SAGE has out at SAGE City that I've included here, sagecity.com slash support communities, SAGE 100 ERP, SAGE 100 year end. It has a lot of useful payroll information, year end information. If you have any questions that we don't address here in this webinar, feel free to contact us at helpdesk at swktech.com. So we will open the floor to questions. And thank you for your attendance. Okay, Chris, we have a first question here. Uh, the person says, I have modules that have not been closed in nine years and some oh. that were closed two years ago. Okay. Should I still close the modules in the order shown on that list? Yes. So you should close each of the modules. So if you have accounts receivable that haven't been closed in nine years, you can do one of two things. You can close them month by month in the, in the order that you do it. Um, some people actually go just to the end of the year and close them and don't worry about the reports or anything like that because it's nine years old. If you want to give us a call, we can walk you through doing that. Um, but you want to make a habit of closing your modules um, on a timely basis and doing your year-end processing because you will, it makes your reports run faster because you don't have as much data to process through it and you don't have to keep changing your dates every time you run a report. Uh, when you're looking in your general ledger, you don't have to keep changing from year to year. And your information on the, the month-end reports on some of these is specific to the current period. So you're getting old information in some of the, that. Okay, and another question. I joined late. Did I miss payroll? This is my first year end or even month with SAGE 2018 joined the webinar at purchase order you missed it by a day we did the payroll year-end webinar yesterday if you can provide your information we will send you a link for the recording for that one and then if you have any questions you can contact us and we have a few requests to get recording copies of today's sessions and to get uh, copies of your slide deck okay we can provide those to you. A copy of the recording will be automatically will be automatically sent a link for that. If you want a copy of the slide deck, we can send that to you as well. Um, Most of the time, this doesn't change from year to year. This is the, the the processes are pretty static. So once you start in on this process, there's um, there's few changes that need to be done. It's just getting in the habit of doing them. Also, um, before everyone hops off today, I'm going to be posting a link to yesterday's webinar in the chat box, so it's available to everyone. Um, that way, you know, you don't have to go through the trouble of looking it up on YouTube, but it is on YouTube as well. So look for that link I'm about to post, and then also look on our YouTube channel. Yes, and, and yesterday's webinar also included 1099 processing for those of you that, that um, have to do that. It's available on that one, too. It walks you through the whole e-filing process. And then we had a follow-up from that question. It says, I was on yesterday. It was W-2s. I didn't see the payroll period end. We did address the payroll period end in there. If you uh, review the recording and you still have questions, please feel free to reach out to us, and we can walk you through the period end process. Okay, that's all the questions we have at this point. If anybody else has questions, go ahead and enter those in. The link to yesterday's webinar has been posted in the chat box, so take a look in there, copy the link so you have it. Um, if you have any problems, feel free to reach out to us and we can send it to you directly as well. And 
you will be also provided the link to this one within 24 hours. Um, if you don't get it, uh, please let us know. Thank you all have, for attending. And we have um, one oh, more one question more? came in. Um, okay. Do you have a list that shows the order in which each module should be closed? Yes, that was on my slideshow. Um, I can go back and show you. But I can, we can provide you a list if you want us to just, if you can provide your email address, we can send that to you. There we go. So this is a recommended order of closing. I'll leave it up there for a few minutes so if you want to write it down. And like it says at the bottom, if you don't own the module, you can just skip it. This is just Sage's recommendation. And bill of material, work order, barcode, um, and bank reconciliation do not have period end and year end processing, but you just want to make sure that all of the transactions have been updated through the end of the year prior to doing processing and other modules because everything flows through the different modules. There's also a request for yesterday's slide deck. So yesterday was mainly a, um, you, Chris, uh, I'm sorry, Ryan was in Sage 100 showcasing how to close out a few things. So it's not so much a slide deck, but more so a recording of how to do go through the year and close out. So I recommend watching the recording. Uh, I don't think that the slide deck will provide as much insight as um, watching the recording itself. Do you agree, Ryan? Yes, yes. And that link that Chris had at the end of her slides for Sage's year-end uh, website on Sage City, they have a lot of great resources out there that go through step-by-step -step closing the modules and doing your year end and all of that stuff. So you can also go out there to get step-by-step -step instructions for things. All right, well, if that's all the questions, please feel free to contact us. If you have any follow-up questions or as, before you're doing processing, if you have any uh, concerns, and happy holidays to everyone. Thank you for attending. We appreciate your time. Thank you.